Hello my lovely subscribers, I just want to thank you for being so supportive, for listening to my videos, for sharing them and sometimes you know I'm always saying you know to new subscribers like, share but sometimes I don't really take the time to show how much I appreciate my existing subscribers so I thought I would do that because I wanted this video to be about our dark side and our light side. And we all have a dark side and we all have a light side. That light side is the part where we're smiling, where we're friendly, whether we're cons where we're considerate, we're thoughtful, and we just sometimes go over and above. We're unselfish. And then we have that dark side, that dark side that, some of us have when we look at someone and we start imagining what that person is like. We actually create an image of what we think that person is like and sometimes we can get resentful and jealous and angry and sometimes even if on a daily basis people can actually leave their homes, they can get up in the morning feeling quite okay you know, they have their breakfast and then one thing, you know, they can't find their keys and they start cursing, then they get angry, then they get in their car and then they start cursing the people who are driving, they get into work and they're moody and that dark side just overtakes them. Sometimes we have to wonder where that dark side comes from. So I have a colleague at work and I've never seen her dark side. I'm always aware of my dark side because I can be very impatient and I can be very rigid and I can be very intolerant and I can be quite um, cynical. And what other dark sides do I have? I have lots of dark sides. But I also have the balance of nice sides. And I think what happens why my dark sides come out is because either I feel as though I've been taken for granted, I feel unappreciated, I feel neglected. I feel, it's all these things that we yearn to make us feel good about ourselves. And sometimes it's not that you're seeking external validation, but sometimes whether or not you've grown up in an in a lifestyle where you didn't have that nurturance. Like I'm always saying to uh, my subscribers, I grew up in a foster home. It was for a short time, but it was in the formative parts of my years. Between the age of four and eight, those are your key years. Those are the time when you're looking for love, you're looking for nurturance, you're looking for validation, you're looking for support. And I didn't have that growing up. I had, when I was born, my mother was very nurturing until she put me in the foster home and she put me in there not to get rid of me per se, but so she could work and get a home. But the fact of the matter is those key formative years, I was without. No love, I mean, in foster homes, they tend to, even though it was a private foster home, they still tend to be quite cold and you don't get, well, to be honest, my nanny did used to give us a little cuddle, but I was raised by a white lady and an Anglo-Indian lady until I was eight. But we didn't get that um, unconditional love. You know, we got thrown in the cellar if we did something wrong or we got hit across our bottom with a stick if we did something wrong. And there was nobody to kind of reassure us that somebody loved us. And so... When I got out into the big, well, actually, I, my mother came and took us back when we was about eight. So I grew up with my mother, you know, for until I was a teenager. But during those years, I'd already distanced myself from my mother. I'd already felt kind of resentful that she'd put me into a home. And I felt resentful that, you know, I'd lost that attachment and I'd lost that closeness. And my mother had grown cold and distant, so even though she'd taken us back, there was no love, there was no nurturing, there was no kissing, there was no cuddling, there was no compliments, there was no rewards. It was just like, you know, 
we had made her work so hard, she had lost out on a lot of what she probably wanted to do in order to get home so she could get us. So she had a little bit of resentment of what she had to sacrifice. And because she had to sacrifice it, she took it out on us. So, we're, well, my brother ended up getting a bit more, you know, with men or boys, they more cling to the mother and the women tend to cling to the father. But my father, of course, was in Jamaica. So I didn't have that fatherly, genuine father, um, fatherly love so I ended up kind of growing up kind of not quite knowing um, how to get love how to feel love and so if somebody paid me the slightest bit of attention when I was younger I was all goo goo gaga you know so sometimes where and then you know if I didn't get it then I'd be vying for it and then you know you get resentful and you get angry and you grow up um, in your teenage and adolescent years, feeling quite, um, not necessarily vulnerable, but maybe intolerant. I think I grew up being quite intolerant. And so that is my dark side that I've been battling with for years. And now I've, you know, now I've, I've had my marriages and I've kind of reached a stage now where I feel kind of satisfied with my life and who I am. But my God, it takes forever. So when we see, when our dark side comes out, we shouldn't really chastise ourselves. I'm, I'm, I'm always chastising myself, even though I'm telling you not to. I always say to myself, you know, try to be kind, try not to be impatient. And then today my intolerance comes out. I get an, I get a request. And um, when I got the request, the person said I took too long to do it. Who tell the fucker tell me that? I was livid. Because the thing is, I had been prioritizing and I typed, I mean, it still wasn't a rude email. But if I wasn't so um, intolerant, I might not have even responded. But then I thought to myself, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to let people get away with misjudging me or saying that I've done something when I haven't done something and keeping my mouth shut. And that's what I used to do because nobody used to listen to me when I was younger because I was raised in that era where children were seen and not heard. I was just a type of person where I didn't think my what I thought was worth anything. So I never used to say anything. I just used to let people get away with whatever. And they just used to walk all over me. So, I mean, more recently, and, and I'm an adult. And sometimes it takes years to get through all of this garbage. And even now, I kind of say to myself sometimes, you need to speak up and not be afraid of the consequences. Now, sometimes I used to, when I used to speak up when I was younger, my mum always said, oh, you're too blunt. You, you know, you have to um, curtail the way you speak. You know, it's not what you say, it's the way you say. And I was ever, ever being kind of channeled to be a certain type of person. I could never just speak out. I always had to say it in a certain way. Everything I had to say was kind of conditioned and molded. And I reached a point where I'm like, when I reached a certain age, I just used to keep quiet. I'd say a little bit, a little test of waters a little bit. And if nobody listened, nobody paid attention, I'd keep my mouth shut. I used to think, what is the point? So now, as an adult, I've learned to, I've learned that and it, these videos have helped. I've learned that my voice is worth something and I should be able to speak. And because I'm respectful of myself and I'm respectful of my audience, I am not going to say anything um, intentionally to offend anyone. I just like to speak my truth. And now that is what I'm doing. So now, like at work, I thought to myself, ordinarily, I would have let her get away with it. And I would say, oh, you know, I can't be bothered to make waves. I can't be asked to make it. I said, I'm not going to say I can't be asked anymore either, because that means I can't be asked to make an effort. So that's another thing. 
you know, when I'm looking on my bright side and my dark side, that's my dark side. I can't be asked means I can't be bothered to make an effort. It's not worth the effort. So I need now to change my language. So all I'm trying to say is that we all have dark sides. And I am still learning to bring out the lighter side of me so that I can kind of, I, you know, I don't have to get so um, irritable and reactionary at every little thing. But I think it's because of years and years and years of being pushed down. So what happens now is that when I speak out and I get a chance to speak out, it's just like, oh, oh. You know, as though the pot's cut to come off my head. You know, I've been in this pot. It's been boiling all this time. Somebody's taking the lid off and all the steam's coming out. So that's what happens now. So I'm still learning that it's okay to speak. It's okay to be heard. It's okay for me to say how I feel and give my opinion. And yes, there will be always those people who don't agree. But considering I never used to say anything at all, these videos are an achievement and I'm hoping that over time my lighter side will become brighter and brighter and brighter and the darker side will become dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. So I'm sure, you know, when you're, when you're thinking about what your dark side is, you know, are you that type of person to kind of pick on people or criticise or say nasty things and ask yourself where it comes from? Because I'm sure it comes from somewhere. The same way with me. I used to criticise no end. And I, you know, and I don't even know what happened. I stopped it quite a, I stopped it quite as well, years ago now, but I still find my odd little criticisms, but they're not nasty criticisms as opposed to, you know, when you criticise someone and you kind of, oh my bloody hell, look at her, look what she's got on, oh, couldn't she even coordinate that? That's what, that used to be me. I used to love to people watch and I used to sit and criticise and that was a reflection of my low self-worth at the time. Now, Anytime I see somebody, I just see the good in them or I try to see the good in them and there's good in everyone. So, yeah, it's, it's a journey. And I just wanted to share that with you. I'm not even quite sure why I'm sharing it with you, but I just felt inspired to share it with you. And that's all for now. Bye bye.